Hello everyone and welcome to the Language School of the World where we teach real English in an easy and fun way. Ever found yourself puzzled by interrogative sentences? Well, you're not alone. Interrogative sentences or questions uh, are an essential part of everyday conversations. They help us to ask for information, to express curiosity and to connect with others in meaningful ways. But what exactly are they? How do we form them correctly? And what are the different types of interrogative sentences or questions? In this video, we are going to dive into the world of questions. We are going to explore why interrogative sentences are super important, how to spot and build these sentences like a pro, the do's and don'ts of forming questions, different types of uh, inter interrogative sentences uh, because variety is the spice of life, and some common mistakes to avoid so you can shine like a star. Before we start, we kindly ask you to click on the subscribe button so you never miss out on all our free content and our channel can continue growing. Your support means the world to us. Thank you. So, are you ready to unravel the mystery of interrogative questions? Let's dive in and look at what are exactly interrogative sentences. So, in simple terms, as I said before, they are questions. They are used to ask for information, like in every language, uh, to clear up confusion and to also spark conversation. Typically, they begin with a question word like who, what, where, when, why, or how. In the case of yes, no questions, they might start with a helping verb instead or a modal verb. No matter how they are phrased, all interrogative sentences share one key feature. Can you guess what it is? Exactly they all end with a question mark. So, as I said before, uh, interrogative sentences play an essential role in our daily interaction. They help us to obtain information, to resolve confusion, to engage in deeper conversations as well. So whether you're asking for directions or looking for advice or starting a casual conversation, you are going to have to ask a question or use interrogative sentences. So interrogative questions or sentences have a distinct structure in English that makes them easily recognizable over and above the question mark at the end. So as we said before, they typically begin with a question word, uh, what, where, how, etc or with a helping verb or a modal verb like is, are, do, did. Um, and then this is followed by the subject and then by the main verb. For example, in the question, in the easy question, that we all know, what is your name? What is the question word? Is, is the helping verb or the verb uh, and your name is the subject. This structure clearly signal that it is a question. However, not all questions follow this exact pattern. In informal speech, we sometimes see interrogative sentences that start directly with the subjects. For example, you're going where? In this case, the subject uh, you comes first, followed by the verb are going, and then the question word where at the end. Remember that this is in colloquial and informal language. So understanding these different structures is essential for crafting uh, correct questions. So now let's take a closer look at the various types of interrogative sentences and how they work. Let's start with yes, no questions. They are the simplest form of interrogative uh, sentences. And as the name suggests, these questions can be answered with a straightforward yes or no. They usually begin with a helping verb like is or are or 
even can or will. For example, can you swim? Or do you work from home? In both cases, the structure is consistent. The helping verb or the modal verb comes first, followed by the subject, and then by the main verb. The straightforward pattern is typical of yes, no questions, making them easy to identify and to use in a conversation. WH questions or questions that start with a question word, so what, where, uh, why, when, are slightly more complex uh, than yes, no questions. These questions, uh, of course, start with a WH question word. Um, and unlike yes, no questions, um, the answers cannot just be yes or no. For example, where do you live? Why are you late? So in these sentences, the structure is very clear. The question word comes first, followed by the helping verb, the modal verb as well, the subject, and then finally the main verb. This arrangement uh, allows us to gather more specific and informative responses, making WH questions essential for deeper conversation and understanding. We also have alternative questions. Uh, where they present choices within their structure. So they function similarly to yes, no questions, but provide more than uh, two possible answers. Typically, these questions include the word or indicate the options available. For instance, would you like tea or coffee? Or are you going by bus or by train? In these examples, the structure begins uh, with a helping verb or a modal verb, followed by the subject and then the main verb, and then the choices separated by or. Uh, this format allows the listener to make a decision between the given options, making alternative questions a useful tool for facilitating uh, conversations. Now let's move on to tag questions. They are a fascinating aspect of English grammar. They transform statements into questions by adding a short question tag at the end. The tag acts as a mini question that seeks confirmation or clarification at the end of the statement. I know it sounds complicated, but let me give you an example. You're coming to the party, aren't you? Or... It's a beautiful day, isn't it? In these examples, the main statement precedes the question tag. This structure allows us to confirm something we believe to be true, making tag questions uh, a valuable tool for engaging conversation and ensuring understanding. Another type of question is rhetorical questions. These are special because they don't really require an answer. They are used to make a point or to persuade rather than to gather information. For example, who do you think you are? Or how could I possibly forget? Now, these questions are more about expressing feelings or thoughts rather than seeking answers. So they add drama or emphasis both to speech and to writing. So forming interrogative sentences or questions involves several essential rules that guide you on how to build these questions. Uh, these rules focus on word order, uh, on the use of auxiliary verbs, and on the proper punctuation and also intonation while you are speaking. Understanding these rules is vital for crafting clear, and effective questions. So let's explore these rules uh, in more detail to enhance your ability to ask questions with confidence and precision. A fundamental rule for forming interrogative questions is uh, subject-verb inversion. So this means that in questions, the verb typically precedes the subject or comes before the subject. For instance, in the question, are you ready? The verb are comes before the subject you. This inversion not only indicates that we are asking a question, but also helps to clarify the sentence uh, intention. 
So auxiliary verbs are essential in forming interrogative sentences um, as they help us to build questions across different tenses. The structure is always the same, but the auxiliary verbs change according to uh, the, the tense. So for example, in the present simple tense, we might ask, do you like ice cream? In the past tense, the question will be, did you watch that movie? Uh, for the future simple tense, you can ask, will you attend the party? In each of these cases, the auxiliary verbs do, did and will uh, serve to create the questions and clarify the tense, making it easier for the listener to understand the context. Punctuation and intonation also play crucial roles in conveying the nature of interrogative sentences. First and foremost, every question, as we said before, must end in a question mark. This punctuation not only signify that a question is being asked, but also it helps the reader to recognize the sentence's intent. In spoken English, uh, intonation is vital. Typically, the voice rises at the end of the question, signaling to the listener that uh, a response is anticipated. For example, in the question, are you coming to the party? The upward inflection indicates that the speaker is seeking for an answer. This rise in intonation enhances communication and ensures that the listener is aware that a reply is expected. Now, as we said before, there are different types of questions. There are direct questions, indirect questions, open-ended questions and closed questions. Now, direct questions are clear and to the point. They seek specific information, uh, typically begin with a question word like who or what, um, and also with or with an auxiliary verb. For instance, you must, might ask, where is the library? It's a direct question or do you like pizza? These questions uh, are direct and request the information that you want. In contrast, uh, indirect questions are more formal and polite. For example, they are often used in uh, professional or more formal situations or contexts, and they soften the inquiry. So for example, instead of asking, where is the library? You might say, uh, could you tell me where the library is? This phrasing makes the question more respectful and less demanding. We also have uh, what we call open-ended questions where um, the structure of the question um, enhances more elaborate uh, responses and invites the other person to express thoughts or their feelings. Um, for example, what do you think about the new policy? This type of questions allows for a wide range of answers, uh, fostering deeper conversations. In contrast to these, we have closed questions where they restrict the, the response to a simple yes or no, or a brief piece of information. For instance, uh, the question, do you like the new policy, is a closed question, uh, and it limits the answer to yes or no, and often it doesn't encourage further discussion. When crafting interrogative sentences, remember to keep your goal in mind of um, why you're asking that question and what kind of answer you would like. So whether you want an open-ended uh, question or a closed question, whether you are in a formal setting or an informal setting. Um, it's also easy to make mistakes uh, in the word order. Um, that can also lead to confusion and miscommunication. For example, um, neglecting to invert the subject and the verb, as we said before, um, you are going where, which is grammatically incorrect, but it is used in informal language. The correct um, form should be, where are you going? Uh, this inversion, of course, uh, helps to clarify that you are asking the question and it is more formal. Another common mistake uh, is the use uh, of uh, the auxiliary verbs in the wrong way. 
for example, um, do you can swim? Do you know where the mistake is here? You cannot use um, two auxiliaries. You cannot use do and um, the modal verb can. So it is, you have to remember how to build the question while you are making it. Grasping the nuances of interrogative questions is essential for effective communication. They enable us uh, to seek information, to engage in meaningful conversations, to express curiosity. By mastering these rules and structures, uh, you can significantly uh, enhance your English language skills. This mastery will empower you to navigate social, academic, and professional environments with confidence and clarity. So you made it to the end of this video. Give yourself a high five. We have covered a lot of things to in this video. Um, why interrogative sentence are so important, how to spot and build uh, sentences, the do's and don'ts in forming questions, the different types of interrogative sentences because there's lots of variety, and some common mistakes to avoid. Um, thanks for hanging out with us, and we hope uh, you're feeling ready to tackle questions with confidence. So go ahead and put your new skills to the test, and remember that asking questions is the key to unlocking all kinds of fun conversations. Have you ever thought about how mastering a language really hinges on practice and perseverance? What if you kept watching and practicing consistently? And what's stopping you from making mistakes uh, along the way? Isn't that how we grow as learners? So, are you ready to embrace the journey and improve your skills? If you like this video, please hit the like button and we hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.